Hi everyone, this is Leech. Today I will be teaching you how to paint watermelons. In specific, we will be using Chinese ink techniques uh, with our watercolors. So you won't, you won't need to buy any new materials. Um, I think a lot of people are interested in Chinese ink techniques, but they don't want to invest in you know, the different set of paints and paper and brushes. And so this is something that you can do at home with whatever you have that you own from watercolors. What's the difference between Chinese ink techniques and traditional watercolor techniques? Um, most of it derives from the difference in the surface that we use. So the surface for Chinese ink techniques is very absorbent. I'll show you a sample here. I folded this up, but um, one sheet looks like this. And you can see how thin and tissue-like it is. Uh, because it is so absorbent, most of our strokes that we use for Chinese ink painting uh, tend to be mark making strokes. We try not to go over the same stroke too many times because um, it appears very patchy and uneven. I, I like to think of it as Kung Fu, you just, you know, you have to get the stroke right. In comparison, when you look at watercolor paper and um, you see that it's, it's a little resistant and this resistance gives you time gives you and the paint time to blend uh, on the surface uh, which we don't have for, for rice paper. So although we're using Chinese ink techniques for this tutorial, we will need to improvise because we are using watercolour paper. Another difference um, is actually in the paint that we use. For watercolours that we usually use, these are transparent and um, for our Chinese or Japanese watercolours, these tend towards a more opaque kind of a formula and it's opaque because again the paper uh, the pigments need to sit on top of that paper instead of just sinking all the way through and if you're interested in the notes these notes these are available on my Instagram account or on Facebook where you can print them and now I'm going to show you how to load up your brush so that um, you can create a blend inside the brush. Uh, this is a very common technique that we use in watercolour painting. We load up the brush to reflect the mark that we're going to make. Um, so I'm going to wet the brush and so it's a, little bit, it's a little bit moist but it's not super wet. I'm going to blot it off a little bit to make it damp. Then I'm going to pick up a little cadmium red light. Uh, this is very diluted. Very diluted, you'll see. And I'm going to load it up in my brush. So now I've got water and very diluted cadmium red light. Now I'm going to go for, just put the tip here and I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I will scrape off the excess on the side. Then I'll do that again. And scrape off the excess on the side. So what I have here now is I've created a blend inside the brush head from more saturated to least saturated. Now if I if I make a mark on rice paper, you'll see that it will show on the rice paper very clearly. So I'm gonna go. And you see here that it's water, light red, medium red, and in a much darker red. This will show up a little bit more clearly when, when this paper is dry. Um, but if I do the same thing on watercolor paper, uh, it won't be laid out this way. So I, I need to start again. I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to blot it. And um, I'm just going to use very light, very light cadmium red. And then I'm going to start loading up again the tip, mix a little bit here, and then scrape off the excess and repeat. Here you go. So now when I touch this to watercolor paper, you'll see that maybe um, it does create a mark, but because of the paper's resistance, it's not going to show the full blend. And I will have to get in there and blend it myself. It's so resistant that nothing happens. Look. Okay, so now I have this. I will have to get in there with my brush. And... Uh, blend it by hand at the bottom. Just clean up the bottom, that's all. 
Okay, so this resistance actually is different for a different watercolor paper. This in particular is quite resistant. Um, if I'm using a lower grade student paper, you'll see that the mark is closer to this. Okay, what I'll do now is I'm gonna demo how to do uh, how we paint watermelons on Chinese ink paper, and then we'll do the demo on uh, watercolor paper to see the difference. I'm going to load up the brush with lower saturation uh, cadmium red and then I'm going to load up the tip with higher saturation cadmium red so I won't, I won't put too much effort into this because it's not going to make the mark anyway I'm just going for a carefree uh, summerish essence of watermelon look so I don't want to add too many strokes the, um, Chinese painting is, is very minimal if we do too many strokes it looks very contrived so for this one, I'm just going to make the mark and pivot the brush. Okay, so that, that went pretty well. And then you're going to clean up the sides. And, and then I'm going to pull out some of the paint again. I'm also now going to add in a yellow or a light green, whatever you have light blend between and then I'm going to go in with a darker green and I'm making this slightly thicker so that it won't diffuse as much when I place this here you see it doesn't really bleed in the next one I'll do is a half slice slightly different shape um, my brush is already loaded so I'm just going to load up the tip again to make it uh, deeper and now I will I'll do a half slice and I'll just kind of well I guess it's either way maybe I'll do this way I'll just do this you can see the gradation but we still need to pick up so at this junction I will soften it out you know I'll add water but it will not it shouldn't be so much that it bad runs into the watermelon and if I feel like the watermelon is too light, I can just drop in a little bit of red. And get my yellow. And come here to this edge. 
while it's still wet so that it will look soft. Blend it in and take the dark. Blend it in as well. And then with slightly a thicker saturation, if I go out here, it won't diffuse as much. Okay, the last one I'll do is a round one and for that I'll pivot on both sides so I'll swipe the brush across if you're not sure what I'm talking about you can check the notes so I'm gonna go this way and this way this way and this way okay and um here I'm gonna add some water to have a nice run. If this part is too dry, you can just reintroduce some water or paint into it. Let's drop in some paint. So this should be a sharp edge. And on this side, it should be soft. And then pull this. Oh, my brush is still ripped. Pull this to make it softer. Then now I'm going to go to the yellow. And then I'm going to go for the green, blend it in, and because this is like a half a melon, I, I need a little bit more rind, I'm going to extend out. You can see I don't do many many strokes, just I'm trying to be as minimal as possible. That's it. Okay, and I may go in to clean up certain areas like I think uh, it's too red. I'm gonna drop in some paint and remove it. Same here. And the last thing I'll do is to add the seeds. I like to do it on a moist paper so that it doesn't look too harsh. If you find that it's diffusing too much, then uh, the mixture for your brown should be slightly thicker than what's on the paper so it won't diffuse as much. So something like this, um, if you look, it doesn't really diffuse outwards so much. And yeah, that's it. So this is how I do uh, watermelons on watercolor paper but using Chinese ink techniques. If you try this project at home, don't forget to tag me so I can have a look. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Mm -hmm.